This podcast is presented by the Bank of San Antonio, our community source for entrepreneurial business growth. We dedicate this episode to all the entrepreneurs powering the possible and earning their growth every day. To build your business even further, join the network of entrepreneurs at the Bank of San Antonio, member FDIC. Today's story is about how, against all odds, the underdog can win by working relentlessly and courageously to earn a seat at the entrepreneurial table. It's about writing new rules about who is welcome at the table and helping others map out a secure future. Grab a seat. Lorenzo Gomez is chairman of Geekdom, San Antonio's number one co-working community. He's co-founder of the 8020 Foundation and author of The Salanthra Diaries, Business Lessons from the Most Unlikely Places. And he has a mission, to create an incubator for the future by building environments for entrepreneurs to succeed. Why? Because he got a job that changed his life when Rackspace took a chance on the self-described kid with no college degree and taught him that small steps cover great distances. At Rackspace, he became what he believed. I was an inner city Hispanic kid with no college degree, and they gave me a job at a tech company. Not a part-time job, right? Not an hourly job. They gave me a full-time salary, and it changed my life. And so every time one of the Geekdom companies hires their first employee, I think they could be hiring the next Lorenzo Gomez. And there's nothing more inspiring to me than that mission. Understanding his journey, beginning with a few flunked classes, to managing at Rackspace, to founding and opening his own companies, is understanding how a single person's story can inspire others and change the trajectory of our city. Lorenzo's mission is to elevate the stories that we tell ourselves about who we are and what we can accomplish. I think that the greatest way to change someone's mind is to give them a new story. And I think that if you're growing up on the West Side right now, you know, you have, you have thought something like, well, I have to be super rich to start a company or I have to be Steve Jobs smart to start a company. And I think that when you show someone the story or you tell someone the story of an entrepreneur that started like them, that started in their neighborhood, that grew up on the same street, that had the same conditions and environment, that had the same schooling or lack of schooling, all of a sudden you put yourself in their story and you think if they did it, then I can do it. And I think that this is the new currency that we trade in in our city, is we are trying to tell new stories so that that next generation can really have hope and believe that they can be the next entrepreneur, which they can be. Lorenzo grew up in a family of seven kids and he attended the Foya Middle School on the west side of San Antonio. He had a rocky start in education that brought with it low self-esteem. At age 16, when Lorenzo had the opportunity to go to Health Careers High School, his path changed. So you had to get accepted into Health Careers. So my sister got accepted, and I did not get accepted when it was my time. And so, um, because I, I flunked a couple classes, which is I'm very ashamed of. Uh, and so, but my sister Sonia is so charming that she went in and pitched the principal and said, you should give my brother a chance. So I went in there with all my report cards and every award, and I mean, I think I had zero to do with getting in, but he let me in because of my sister. And so I transferred from Brackenridge, I was going to Brackenridge to health careers. And that one thing changed my life. Everything good in my career started at health careers. Well, you know what's funny is that none of us really, none of us had ever really talked about being in a health career. And so my parents just said, that's a great school and you're gonna go there. And we said, yes sir, yes ma'am. It was so radically different coming from SAISD, which I love. I have a heart for, but SEICD was rough. And I went to health careers, and I remember coming home the first day at health careers, and I told my brother, I said, dude, craziest thing happened today. These two guys bumped into each other, and they said they were sorry. And then they kept going. It was the craziest thing ever. And, like I had never seen something so civil. <laughs> I'd never been to a place so civilized. <laughs> I, I walked into the bathroom, and I thought, this, is, this must be the teacher's bathroom. Like I, like I ran out of there, I was like, Everything's put together. There's doors on the stalls. The toilet paper's not chained. Like, this is so not what I'm used to. I, I had to have a, a see-through bag when I went to Brackenridge. I was the only guy at health careers with a see-through backpack. It was just a different world. Uh, but this whole notion that I was like, I don't have to worry about getting 
beat up. <laughs> so it was, a, it, was a new, it was a new experience to me. My self-esteem up into that point was really low. And health careers is where everything started changing. It's where I met people that were nice to me. I met people that uh, really saw my potential. I met teachers that were just, that would take time to talk to me. And I feel like that's where my self-esteem started going up into the right in my life. Right. Such a weird moment. Right. That's really where I started having hope. This is a conversation with an entrepreneur who relentlessly cultivates habits of courage and who went from being the first in his family to become a business founder and CEO to being a creator of ecosystems that cultivate entrepreneurs. As a teenager, he tried to be invisible. Now he's a leader with courage, heart, and hope. Lorenzo's worldview first opened up when he went to Health Careers High School. The first day in the first week, I thought, these people, actually it's, it's very weird whenever you're in the presence of superlativeness, and that's exactly what I felt when I got the health careers. You immediately met people and were like, you have just something that I don't, and you are smarter in all these areas than I am not. Everything about it was different. The, the, the structure of the classes, the way they taught, the things that they talked about were just so different than what I came from. You know, people were reading books not because they, they had to, but because it was part of their culture. These were things that were very foreign to me, and I knew right away, I didn't know how special it was, but I knew I was in a radically different environment. Well, and also I think that to me, this is really where I first started picking friends that I admired first and I said I want that person to be in my network because I'm so impressed with them and I'm so impressed with their brain and how they view the world and Dax you know who I wrote about in my book he was one of the first people where I thought that guy's intellect is so amazing it's like jujitsu and I need some of that in my life <laughs> and so I said I'm gonna make him my friend. Hope is the heart of Lorenzo's philosophy on entrepreneurship. It comes down to creating the conditions that embolden people to discover their ability to achieve. Some might say it's his underdog mentality that makes Lorenzo unstoppable. They also see that making San Antonio better for the entrepreneurs of today and tomorrow is what his inspiring mission is all about. Welcome to San Antonio Business Heroes. I'm your host, Angela Capalm, here with a business blueprint that shows how businesses are built and grown in San Antonio. Today, we share exclusive insights from an inspired entrepreneur who sees every challenge as an invitation to grow and learn. He shares the secret to the birth of great companies, why you should become famous for just one thing, and how stories crystallize beliefs. As an entrepreneur, you are presented with two choices, evolve or repeat. Pay attention to your patterns of behavior because the ways you learn to survive may not be the ways that you want to continue to live. You have the opportunity to restore, shift, and evolve. I'm so excited about this, and I hope you share it with your friends, colleagues, and those who need inspiration to power their business or idea. So if you're listening, take a screenshot, tell me what you think about the podcast or tag us at SA Business Heroes over on Instagram and Facebook. Let us know that you're listening and what you'd like to hear more about. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Let's dig in. I do think that people need to dream, and I do think that you, they need to have an inspired mission to live up to, uh, which thankfully I, I got at Rackspace. They were the first ones that gave me a glimpse of, we're doing this huge thing that's bigger than ourselves, and you're a part of it. And I thought, man, that's so special. Well, first off, when I got the job at Rackspace, I was so intimidated by it because I really didn't understand what managed hosting was. And it's still a very hard concept to explain. You know, my mom, I told my mom, I said, I just work for the internet. Rackspace started in 1998 with the simple principle that the internet needed more servers. So Rackspace rented servers to people. Lorenzo joined Rackspace in 2001 as an account manager at a time when Rackspace and the internet were exploding. The company was full of 22 year olds who would often walk around barefoot and sleep in the office because they were scrambling to keep up with the demand. 
Rackspace evolved into a service business managing servers, and since then has grown into a global company with revenues of more than $2 billion today. It is through this fire hose of an experience at Rackspace that Lorenzo's drive and talent caught the eye of one of the founders of Rackspace, Graham Weston, when they accidentally ended up sharing a cubicle in the early days. But there was this voice inside of Lorenzo's head saying, I'm not ready for this. But I was terrified, and I thought for sure every day, they're gonna hear me on the phone, they're gonna realize I have no idea what a DNS server is, and they're gonna walk me out the building. <laughs> so I lived with fear. Lorenzo learned that the only power that fear had was the attention and authority he granted it. So he disobeyed that voice. That voice was not his, and it simply wasn't true. There's two things that you can do. You can fold under the pressure or you can just work harder. And I think it's really the underdog's mentality to say, I'm gonna work extra hard to overcompensate and prove that I belong here. And I'm gonna read more articles and books and blog posts. And I'm gonna ask more questions than everybody next to me so that I can earn my seat at this table. Lorenzo's journey is an example of the power of will. Be conscious of how powerful you really are. Sometimes true innovation and elevating yourself into unfamiliar territory and new experience is a struggle. But that's what makes you grow. Remember, you wouldn't have the idea or dream in your heart if you didn't already have what it takes. I think that when you don't have any options, it leads to great innovation. And so to me, one of my great insecurities at that time in my life was not having a college degree. And the tension was, I did not like school. I didn't like going to school. I was very desperate for knowledge. And so part of this underdog mentality I had was, I don't have a degree. I need to hustle to still get the knowledge that I think is what you get when you have a college degree. And so to me, I was very desperate. And, and because of that desperation, I became very innovative. And so my innovation was, how do I go read books and, and learn in another way? So Lorenzo's first piece of advice to entrepreneurs is to assemble a Jedi Council, a personal board of directors to support you in making wise, informed decisions. I just assembled the smartest people that I could find that I wanted to be in deep community with, and I went to them constantly for knowledge, but really for discernment. So many things in your work life, there's no Google answer to. And so there's so much gray area in your life. And so to me, that's what I went to them for, was to say, what should I do? Should I take this promotion? Should I not take it? You know, should I send that angry email? Those are the things that wise people can, can really you know, help you discern and you can't do it by yourself. But I didn't realize that even if I had a degree, I still needed them. I still wouldn't have had the answers to those questions. His second insight for entrepreneurs is to forget the notion that you need to be well-rounded. Chances are you're really great at one thing and can do a couple of other things well. For everything else, cultivate relationships with people who can add their unique strengths to complete the expertise of your personal board of directors and help you run your business. And I think that this is one of the great lies of our time that you need to be well-rounded. Um, and this goes back to a concept that we learned at Rackspace, which is uh, Strength Finders, which is the Gallup uh, methodology. And it was such a mind-blowing concept when they said, forget those things that you're weak at and cut them loose. And it's this whole notion that if, you, if your kid gets a report card, we all focus on the two C's and not the two A's. But what if we lived in this world where you forgot about those two C's, you're never gonna be world-class at them. But if I double down on those two A's, I could be one of the best in the world at them. And I think that great entrepreneurs understand what their A's are and they double down on them. But then they also find the people that supplement them. They find the people where their two C's are A's to those people. And so an entrepreneur can build a team where the people around them complement the things that they're not world-class in. And I think that the sooner you do that, the more potent and the more your team is just a force to be reckoned with. Lorenzo believes that the true entrepreneurial mission is to create a business that heals a pain point in the world. He did this at Rackspace, Geekdom, and now Geekdom Media. I think that most entrepreneurs start a company because they inherently know there is a problem that they can fix, that, and really that only they can fix a certain way. And I think that when they realize that they are 
the only one that can do this thing, that they can be famous for this thing, then it turns from a job into being this inspiring mission. And I think that that is the very beginning of the journey of an entrepreneur to say, there's this pain in the world and no one is solving it and I just can't take it anymore. And I have to be the one that steps up and solves this problem. And when you do that, all of a sudden it becomes your higher calling because someone out there has pain and you are the only one that can actually bring relief to that pain. Well, I'll give you two examples. The first one was when I was at Rackspace, I didn't know what managed hosting was, but when I started talking to customers, the need for people to not become tech experts was so great that when they found Rackspace, they were excited that they didn't have to become experts. They could just give it to us and we ran all their stuff for them. But also Geekdom, I think that when, you know, the whole concept of having a tech co-working space was very foreign to me. And I thought it was a very dumb idea. Um, I, and and I, I remember talking to the founder, Nick Longo, and I thought, man, this will never work in San Antonio. I thought, if you're in tech in San Antonio, Rackspace has either hired you or you've left the city. But there was this tension, there was this, there was this pain and there was a pain in our city that I did not understand until the doors opened. And the first day the doors opened, all these people showed up because there were a lot of tech people here, not just ones that Rackspace were, was hiring, but they all wanted to be in community. And that pain was so great that people showed up in droves and they haven't stopped showing up. And to me, that was really a great example of how when you step up to solve the pain of a customer, that there, if, if, it's, if you're solving pain for one customer, there's probably 100 customers that have that same pain. And I think that most great companies, if you trace them back, they had that initial tension, and they just there's a point where you get fed up and you say, I'm, I'm over it, and I have to be the one that does this, because no one else is gonna do it. So in, in being that hero, that business hero, which is the point of this podcast, is to show that business heroes come from all walks of life and, and fit in different industries, but they create a ripple effect in San Antonio. What has it been like for you to sit at the helm of geekdom and to open the doors and see the endless flood of dreamers, mm. of those who have that innate belief that if they put that stake in the ground, they can achieve it. It's been so inspiring. And, and I'll tell you specifically, my first job in downtown was actually a philanthropic job. And so I spent the first couple years um, running Graham Weston's foundation, the 8020 Foundation. But this very interesting thing happened when I moved and I started running Geekdom as well. We had given away millions of dollars in grants and one day I realized that the greatest gift that you can give the world is actually a good job. And that was the moment where philanthropy changed in my mind and I realized that I was doing the greatest social good that I'd ever done in the world was helping people create good jobs. There's a very famous book by Jim Clifton called The Coming Job Wars and he talks about Gallup does this 100,000 person survey all over the world every couple years, and it's really asking what do people want? And the number one thing that people say all over the world, all backgrounds, all races, right? Poor, medium, you know, middle class, rich, they all say they want a good job. That was really game changing for me, but this notion that when one of the entrepreneurs at Geekdom hires their first employee, we are doing the greatest social good there is in humanity. But also it's a very personal mission for me. So, what pain point are you solving? Find the pain around you, and you'll discover the fertile ground for business opportunities. I think that everything that I've ever been associated with in my career has started with this huge pain point. Uh, Rackspace, Geekdom, even the stuff that I'm doing now with Geekdom Media. And so I think that I try to be an example of an entrepreneur that is looking for pain to solve. And the greater the pain, the greater the value. The greater the pain, the more you can charge, the more money that there is to earn. Uh, the greater the pain, the more people that there are that you can hire. And so to me, I always try to start with what is the pain that you are solving? And that's really one of my pieces of advice to entrepreneurs is if you can go out and find the pain um, around you, then that is really the fertile ground for business opportunities. In a moment, hear advice from Lorenzo when he says that your number one goal for your business is to become famous for one thing. If you're looking for a way to inject your brand with an enviable dose of rocket fuel, you don't want to miss the secret to putting yourself into a category of one. This is Steve Villarreal, business banking officer at the Bank of San Antonio. 
I get to meet with business owners like Lorenzo and see our community grow. When I meet with entrepreneurs, we talk about what the barriers are to their success, and we work on a financial plan to power their business. I get to hear how people grow businesses in San Antonio, and there's nothing better than that. If you're interested in learning more and talking with one of our business banking coaches, my contact info is in the show notes. Let's talk and grab a seat at the table. Earlier, we were talking about solving pain points and how that can propel you to turn your job into an inspiring and profitable mission. To amplify this, Lorenzo continues the conversation with advice on how to turn yourself into a category of one and explains why you can only be famous for something specific. I've been fortunate to have two really amazing mentors in branding and marketing. One of them is Graham Weston and the other one is a guy named Bill Schley. They've said a couple things that have really haunted me in my marketing branding journey. One of them was, we are always in search of extreme differentiation. How do we take our company and show the world that we are extremely differentiated from our customers? Um, another way to put it is, this is a quote from them, is that your goal is to put yourself in a category of one. And so if I'm in the car world, you know, there's cars and there's trucks, and I'm going to keep differentiating until I am the safest car that's not a sports car and and only I can wear this crown. And I think that every business has to be on this journey to find what are you number one at? What can you differentiate yourself so extremely that you put yourself in a category of one? And I think that this has been a very, this is very hard uh, because most, most of the great success stories are for big companies that do everything. And I think that most entrepreneurs will fall for that trap, but the great ones will say, I'm gonna be famous for one thing. And, and, and Graham would say, you can only be famous for something very specific. And so to me, that's really this question of, what do you do that only you in the world can do? What is it that the world needs you to do and that you are the only one in the world that can do that? And I think that if you ask yourself those haunting questions and you never stop, eventually you will get to the point where you know what it is. And I think that's when you hit your marketing groove, is when you say, we do this better than anyone else. And you say it every day until they mock you. Every day, that's right, every day until they mock you. But you know, uh, Bill would always say, you know, specific is terrific. Graham would say there's riches in niches. And I think that what's so important about that notion is that if you're an entrepreneur and you start to achieve success, the world will eventually try to get you to change your mission. They'll say, move it a little bit this way or make it a little bit bigger and include me and include my people over here and my cause over here. But the great entrepreneurs go specific and they're able to really stay the course and focus on one thing that they can be world famous for. Graham Weston says, chase your dream and find your team. And Lorenzo gives advice on the number one mistake he tries to avoid when building teams. I think the first principle in hiring is slow down. And I think that all of the bad hires I've ever done in my career, which is a lot, (laughs) have been because I was hiring from a place of pain. When you're in pain, when you're short staffed, when you know the customers are screaming and you just put a body in there, most of the time you've made a bad call. And I think that when an entrepreneur can slow down, even though there's a million things going on around them and the stress is high, if you can slow down, it just puts you in a position to make 10 times better of a decision. And so I think that to me, that's the, that's the greatest lesson that I've had to learn uh, personally when hiring is I have to slow down. Um, I think the other notion is it's, it's almost like dating, right? Anybody can be really nice for two hours on a date. And same, you know, same thing, anybody can be really nice and professional for a one hour interview. And I think what you're really trying to do is if you're an entrepreneur, this company is your baby. It's your passion. You obsess about it. You wake up every day and you compare everything to it. And I think that maybe you're not gonna get that from every employee, but you want someone who's passionate about the mission. And so how do you ask them questions or how do you put them in an environment to, for them to show you 
that they've taken your, that passion and they've internalized it in some way for them. Um, and it doesn't mean that they have to obsess about it you know, like you do, but I think that you're on a mission to find where that passion is for your mission. And I think that that's a very hard thing to do because there's not a certain question that you can ask them that's going to really reveal that. And so I think that that's hard, but that's really what you're looking for. And I think that when you're an entrepreneur, you know, you don't have headcount to just throw around. You can't waste money on a bad hire. And so you have to take your time and you have to know that the people that are gonna be on your team are gonna be as passionate about the mission as you are. I also think if you go back to Strength Finders, it's really a, hey, what are the strengths that you have, entrepreneur? And what are the ones that you're missing? And you need to go find the people that, like a puzzle, are gonna complete your team. And I think that if you're just looking for carbon copies of yourself, you're going to fail. As an author, an entrepreneur, and a leader, Lorenzo would say that one of his superpowers is storytelling to connect and influence. I think that the number one way to share your mission and to get people excited is through storytelling. Um, there is no, there is, there's just no way around it. People don't remember data. Uh, people will forget the amazing fundraising numbers that you hit last month, um, but, but they'll come back 20 years and tell you a story word for word that you told them about how your organization changed someone's life. And I think that this is really what most entrepreneurs skip. They go straight to the feature benefit or the nonprofit goes straight to the ask. They go straight to the benefits, the long list of things, the why. And I think what you're in search for are stories uh, because it's stories that give people hope. It's stories that inspire people into action. And it's really a story that can articulate what you're doing to the world. And so you are really to find the stories of your customers, the stories of, if you're a nonprofit, the stories of the people that you're helping. It's not about you, it's about them. And I think that if you can tell those stories and make them famous, then you will become famous as a byproduct, but not the direct result of it. And so I think that you, as an entrepreneur, you are a story harvester, and you need to go find the best stories out there to propagate your mission. In reflecting on my conversation with Lorenzo, I see someone who is inspiring our city with his truth and I think he's only getting started. If you're listening to this, know that wherever you are in your journey, you have an opportunity to make the most of this moment. Don't focus on the future version of you. It's the you now who can cover great distances by first taking small steps over and over again. Small steps, great distances. We need your heart, your voice, your courage, and your curiosity to lead. Be conscious of how powerful you are. Now shine your light onto a pain point, become famous for one thing, and share your story with others. You never know who needs your light, your warmth, and your radiant courage. Our future is brighter because our collective willpower will illuminate it. Thank you to our sponsor, the Bank of San Antonio, member FDIC for supporting our show. Now, if you're like many San Antonians out there who have a great idea but don't quite know how to get started, or if you already have a business and you're thinking about expanding your capacity, you know that there's plenty of information out there, but you don't have time to scour the internet for it. That's where the Bank of San Antonio can help you with their business banking coaches who share the information you need to fund, protect, and grow your business. Better yet, get the Bank of San Antonio's Guide to Full Business Growth, The Business Blueprint, when you go to thebankofsa.com forward slash business blueprint. Again, download your free business blueprint guide today at thebankofsa.com forward slash business blueprint. One more time, thebankofsa.com forward slash business blueprint. If you're interested in hearing more from Lorenzo, check out his book, Salantra Diaries. Links and local spots to purchase his book are in this week's show notes. 
Also included in our show notes are the top 10 books that have mattered to Lorenzo in his endless quest for knowledge. You can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, please do give us a review. You can also write to us on Facebook and Instagram at SA Business Heroes. Our show was produced this week by Catherine Sanchez and me. Also, special thanks to Lorenzo Gomez for sharing his expertise and advice. I'm Angelica Palm, and you're listening to San Antonio Business Heroes from the Bank of San Antonio.